weight of the world you stepped down into darkness opened my eyes let me see beauty that made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you here I am to worship here I This recording was inspired by the messages of my Twitter friend Raymond Friel, who commented on his Twitter feed over the weekend on the readings from Sunday's Mass, the fourth Sunday of Lent, and the themes of light and darkness. And thank you too for Joanne Sewell on Facebook, who uh, suggested that I record this particular worship song by Tim Hughes, Here I Am to Worship. It was very appropriate for this last weekend, seeing as the first verse has the words, Light of the world, you stepped down into darkness, opened my eyes, let me see. 
beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. Hopefully this recording and some more that I'm going to be doing each day now, I think, um, but not with as complicated an arrangement in terms of backing tracks, uh, will be a symbol of hope uh, for myself, but for all of us, hopefully, uh, those of you who, who listen to this. In terms of this theme of light and darkness, I just wanted to share with you something that I read, reread on a devotional app, at Pocket Fuel, uh, by Liz and Jesse Milani from Australia that I've been uh, dipping into from time to time over the last few years. And Liz wrote a reflection on the good dark. And I wanted to share it with you, really. Um, because I think it speaks to me in the context of what we're going through now, and hopefully it will be of meaning uh, to you as well. So here's what Liz says. We, spiritual people in general, talk about being a light to the world, a city on a hill. We encourage each other to be the light and to spread the light. And we call God the light. God lights up the darkness. He brings light into our nights and lights the way. Darkness is something to be dispelled, obliterated and overcome, to make way for light. So much light. So much so that we have turned what was only a metaphor and literary function, juxtaposition, into a demonisation of darkness. Everything that is good and holy and pure is typically labelled light, and everything fearful and evil and wrong is generally called dark. And while the metaphor and the literary function of juxtaposing light and dark can be helpful, it's given us a dualistic notion of something that was never at odds with the other. The technical term for being afraid of the dark is nyctophobia. It comes from the Greek words for fear and night. I don't know many people who weren't scared of the dark as kids, and I know a few who are still nervous about it in adulthood. In the interest of full disclosure, we keep a lamp on in the living room all night long. Neither of my children are partial to darkness, and honestly, I'm not a massive fan of pitch black either. But darkness isn't the problem. Our imagination and propensity for fear is. We fear what we cannot see. We fear what we cannot be certain of. What we cannot know what we cannot put to shape and sound and visibility. We think the cure to this fear is to switch the light on, proverbial or otherwise. Light it up, illuminate it, dispelling the darkness. The only thing is that the writer of Hebrews said that faith is being certain of what we cannot see. Hebrews 11 verse 1. It seems that faith happens in the dark. Anne Lamott said, hope begins in the dark. When we are quick to rid ourselves of darkness, we rid our lives of the treasure it holds. Conception happens in the dark of the womb. Healing begins under the dark covering of a bandage. Seeds crack open and begin to grow smothered by the darkness of earth. Gold and gemstones are hewed under the pressure of darkness. Sleep comes fully in the dark of night. We close our eyes to rest. We turn the lights down to relax. There are a stillness and wholeness to be discovered in the dark. Not to mention that it's not until when we face our own darkness, embrace it and acknowledge it, the things we have labelled evil and unholy, that we find peace. And often the revelation that those things don't make us unholy. They're just part of our story. The psalmist wrote, Is there any place I can go to avoid your spirit, to be out of your sight? If I climb to the sky, you're there. If I go underground, you're there. If I flew on morning's wings to the far western horizon, you'd find me in a minute. You're already there waiting. Then I said to myself, Oh, he even sees me in the dark. At night, I'm immersed in the light. It's a fact. Darkness isn't dark to you. 
Night and day, darkness and light, they're all the same to you. End of quote. It's not that the divine sees darkness as light, but rather that both dark and light are of the same value. They are to be held equally. One is not to be ignored or preferred over the other. They are just as powerful as each other, and powerful for good. Besides, for all our labelling of everything evil and unholy in the world of darkness, a lot of horrific things happen in broad daylight. And don't forget that the name Lucifer means light bearer. We should not fear the dark, and we should reject the spiritual vocation of nyctophobia. Let's not make the dark our scapegoat for our need for certainty and constant illumination. When we begin to reclaim our respect for darkness, we'll discover that it, too, is just as powerful to heal and transform as the light. And that's the end of what Liz Milani said in that particular devotional. The quote from the psalm was Psalm 139. The themes of light and darkness are ones that I've often reflected on over the over the years and I collected various references throughout the Bible that touch on these themes. And one that always speaks very powerful to me is the transfiguration. The fact that Jesus was revealed to his closest followers through a blinding light, through being lit up himself, quite literally. And yet he called his followers to follow him down into the valley, down into the darkness of people's lives. And that's where we belong as Christians. We belong in that darkness because that's where we're called to be Christ for others and to be light for them, but not to be afraid of the dark. Because if we avoid the dark, we can't carry out our mission. We have to face it. And I think in these days, there's something similar going on. I think we need to face this challenge, to face this darkness, to not be afraid of it, to see it as an opportunity for growth, to see what healing and opportunities for illumination may come through this time of darkness. And I just wanted to share one last thing, which also comes from a devotional reflection of Liz Milani. And again, it touches on the theme of fear, as opposed to pure darkness, but in this, in this sense, fear. But I love what she says here. Courage looks fear in the face, takes it by the hand, and leaps with it into the unknown. And my prayer, therefore, for all of us today, is that we have the courage to face our own inner demons, to face this outer demon of the virus that is frightening us all, but that we embrace that in the sense of it's part of who we are, it's part of our world that we live in today, and that we find in it opportunities for growth, opportunities for illumination, bringing us closer as people and bringing us closer to God. So, a little bit of an explanation. Why am I wearing these, this outfit? Well, the videos are going to start posting, which, as I said, will be simpler musical arrangements than this one I've been slaving over for the last few days, quite obsessively. Um, I want to share them with some reference to our worldwide network as brothers uh, to express the communion that we share as brothers with our brothers in 25 other countries around the world and all the young people and adults whom they serve. So this shirt uh, was made and purchased in Togo. And Togo was the first African nation that I took a group of young people to in 2007 on an educational project. And it's a souvenir from that trip. And it's a link with our brothers there, and in particular with a Togolese brother who was my co-novice in my novitiate, Brother Roman Samoko. The hat is from World Youth Day in Poland a few years ago, 
and it was something that was given to me at the vocation stand where I was volunteering um, for opportunities for people to come up and talk to us about vocations in general and uh, it's a souvenir of that trip in memory in particular of a young woman who was on that trip with us from France, Claire Le Higer, who is currently still in hospital having been in a serious road accident that I myself was involved in with her and two other young French teachers from our network in Tanzania on February the 24th. She's undergone a series of operations on her right arm. She's still in hospital. She's in total isolation. She can have no visitors. And there are more operations on the way, in particular skin grafts, but it looks like the doctor's collected effort between Tanzania, Nairobi, Kenya, where we were airlifted to, and now back in France, have managed to save her arm, which, if you saw the accident firsthand, you'd realise is quite miraculous. So we thank God for that. And we keep her in our, our prayers, and I ask you to do the same. Apologies for this very long video. They won't all be this long. But uh, thank you very much for listening. God bless.